So you should try to pick up questions which test a variety of different concepts. So make sure you do read the examiner report and get as much of these insights from these as you can. It might seem very obvious to you, but the examiner very much cares for it and he has set apart some marks for you to write this. Hello everyone, this is your instructor Mohammad Talha and I'm your ID for A-Level Physics. And what we are going to talk about now is how you can structure the entire syllabus towards the, uh, how you can structure the entire A2 physics syllabus towards studying the content and doing an ample amount of practice, both topical and yearly, towards getting that grade of your dreams. So first of all, I'll also, so I'll also be addressing common misconceptions and with the help of that, I'll also be discussing the strategy towards breaking down the entire course syllabus. So first of all, keep in mind that there is no such thing that a certain topic will be tested or another one will be not. This one will be more heavily tested, this one will be less tested. There is no such thing. So for example, some people might say that, oh, for a lot of years, a question on circular motion has not come and it might not come this year as well. That is wrong for two reasons. First of all, you don't know what is up with the examiner and what he prepares to, what he wants to give you in the exams. And the second one is this, that the circular motion theory is also used a lot in electric fields and magnetic fields and gravitational fields. So you cannot ignore that as a chapter. So the first step is to make sure that all theory, this must be done. So for the theory, you must know all the graphs, all the derivations. Derivations are a big thing in A2 physics. So you must make sure that you know all of the things, the formula, how to use them, any conversions if those are needed. So all of that stuff must first be done. And now to explain my approach further, I'll first just list down all the topics that are there. And this will be in a particular order, which we'll be discussing in time. So the first one, is circular motion then I'll be writing gravitational fields here then let's do electric fields so on the subject of fields and pretty closely linked to the idea of electric fields is capacitance then when we go forward towards other units let's write the units on temperature so for temperature you have the basic temperature stuff so the Kelvin scale and whatnot. And then you also have thermal properties here. Then you have ideal gases. Then you have your thermodynamic section. And let's also put in oscillations or what you may know as simple harmonic motion in here. And this is our next chunk. And then here, let's write the remainder of uh, what is left. So nine, let's write magnetism and pretty closely linked to magnetism is uh, alternating currents and the last one let's write this as quantum right so all of quantum physics is going to be discussed here the remaining topics that now are left let's write here uh, nuclear physics is left you have medical physics and then the last one which is a rather recent addition to the syllabus astronomy and cosmology right so this is all of the uh, so these are all of the papers that you all of the chapters that you have in your a2 syllabus content now what you must do is let's say you've listened to my advice and you should you've listened to my advice and you've done all the theory of a certain topic let's say for circular motion you are done with all the theory the next step would be to pick out and practice unique past paper questions. Now in a sense, if you talk about A-levels, all of the questions are unique. There are rarely going to be any questions that come word for word in one exam session and also in another exam session. So it's usually all of the questions are going to be very different. But sometimes when you're looking at a question and you're solving this, you might get the feeling that, oh, I did something pretty similar to this in another question before. You try, you should try to avoid questions like these. So you should try to pick up questions which test a variety of different concepts. 
so what i mean by that is for example if one question tests derivation let me write here so if one question assesses derivation then you must try out another one that tests numericals you should try out different questions which assess assesses the knowledge of graphs for example sometimes you might have to make a graph sometimes you might have to extract information from a given graph so you just need to spread it out and make it as diverse as possible if you are looking at some questions and if you feel like you are not able to do a certain question or if that seems tricky to you you should definitely check that out so let's say you have done this for some chapters let's say you did this for circular motion so you did the chapter and then you did the topical questions and for the unique past paper questions it might also help a lot if you have a friend or if you have uh, someone who has given a level physics before and they can hopefully help you single out these different types of questions so you've done that for circular motion you've done topical questions you do the same for gravitational fields you've done all the theory then you do some topical questions same for electric fields topical questions capacitance and then some more topical questions now you should devote some time particularly to the yearly past paper practice so for yearly past papers what you should do is you should single out some of the more recent ones so that you can do those towards the end and towards the end i mean immediately before your exams so like two or three days before your exams at the time that this video is being made october november 23 is the most recent paper so october november 23 is the most recent one and again you will have uh, two variants of the P4s and two variants for P5s and this is what you can keep for doing later. <clears throat> the next most recent session is May June 23 and then you work backwards from it. Right, so from the most recent excluding this one you work backwards from the next most recent session so from may june 23 then you will do feb march 23 then you will do october november 22 and work your way backwards now the golden question is that exactly how many uh, yearly papers you sh uh, should you attempt so how many years of papers should you do you should aim to do roughly three years worth of papers and this is going to be 30 papers and this is going to be 15 paper fours 15 paper fives 15 paper fours is a lot by the way once you've done all of the topical practice as well but some things to keep in mind when you are doing the yearly practice is that to make sure you do this in a timed and exactly in an exam environment so you should time yourself right on the top right of your exam paper exactly what time you start and also write what time you end at and try to narrow down that time uh, so that you do it even less uh, than what the exam says so for example p4 is 1 hour 45 minutes right you should aim to do it at your homes once you get really good at it once you become a pro you should aim to do it in around 1 hour 20 minutes that's because when you do it actually in an exam environment you there's going to be the exam pressure and there's going to be all of those factors which is going to naturally make that time go up so you do this in a timed and exam environment if you feel like you need help with this you can ask one of your family members to supervise you during this process so you're doing the timed and exam environment uh, you're doing the exam in a timed and a proper exam like uh, environment the next step to make sure is to use the mark scheme but for the mark scheme you need to make sure of a couple of things the first one is to not check it after each part so some people when they are doing past paper practice what they have a tendency to do is that they do a certain part and they might be doubtful of it and they immediately go and look at the answer for that certain part and some people do even worse what they do is they look at a question and they think that I cannot do this and then they look at the mark scheme and, say, and then they say that oh I could have done this 
but then you never build up that confidence that you need to actually tackle a full exam paper. So you should not check it after each part. You should instead do it after the full exam. So once you've attempted all of the questions is when you go on to the mark scheme. Now again, the mark scheme originally when uh, it was released by uh, these different boards was never even intended to go into the hands of the students. These were meant for the teachers and the teachers could then convey that information to students. So what a lot of students do is uh, they look at the mark schemes and then they try to understand that and then they try to fully emulate those steps in your calculation because they just think that oh the examiner has given marks for this step this step this step so maybe i just need to show them that's not true you should do as explicit working as possible so flesh your working out as much as you can especially in parts where you have to prove or show something, make sure your working is very, very clear. So let's say you stumble upon a question which, which is for some reason very, very difficult to you. And in such a case, what you'll do is that when you go to the mark scheme, sometimes you will not even understand what the mark scheme is trying to say. In that case, you must go to a third document, which is also very easily accessible for you guys, known as the examiner report. What the examiner report is going to do is it's uh, basically sort of a report by the examiner and that's going to give you a guide of exactly what the examiner wanted you to do in this question and what were the mistakes that most candidates made and how you can avoid those. So the examiner report is also something which is very, very important for you. So make sure you do read the examiner report and get as much of these insights from these as you can. So another problem that will happen is obviously you're doing these past paper questions. You will naturally make mistakes. But sometimes what might happen is you might uh, find for yourself that for each paper four you are attempting, maybe you are getting stuck in all the magnetism questions or like 90% of the magnetism questions. Now what that means is that your practice for that particular chapter is lacking. In that case, there are a certain series of steps that you must take. First, you must go through the theory. So all the notes, all of that stuff that uh, needs to be known, all of the content, you first go through those. And then you do some more topical past paper questions only dedicated to that certain topic. And then you try to build your confidence up from that. And when you feel like you have now gained a mastery over that concept is when you again start with your yearly quests. And this you keep doing until you achieve, uh, until you hit your goals, which is of a minimum of three years worth of papers. So this is the entire game plan here. Now just some general advices about uh, the exam. Whenever you are giving your A2 exam, make sure to be very explicit in show or proof questions. So for example, if you have to do some questions where you have to prove a certain equation or you have to show something, then make sure that your working is very clear. Similarly, whenever you are tackling questions related to graphs, pay attention to the axes of the graph. So a lot of the people, they do look at the axis, but what they do not need, uh, what they do not pay attention to are the prefixes that may be associated with them. Or you may have some powers of 10 that are given and you totally skip that. That's obviously going to impact your answer. So all of these things need to be kept in mind. The last piece of advice as far as question solving goes is this that when you are tackling questions in A2 physics, for example, you're doing a question on medical physics or sometimes a question on, uh, let's say magnetism, which asks you to write out a full response for like four to six months explaining something. Make sure your reasoning is very, very logical. So for example, when you are doing EM induction, you guys might have seen questions like these where there is a certain uh, 
there's a certain material which is swinging between the poles of a magnet and then you need to explain why it slows down with time or why it gets damped is what we say. In that case, you must first start with the idea that why is an EMF even induced? It might seem very obvious to you, but the examiner very much cares for it and he has set apart some marks for you to write this. So just be very, very clear and very, very uh, logical with your reasoning and all your working. So this was something from my side. I hope this helps you ace your A2 exams. Best of luck and I hope you do really well with this. If you have any more questions about how to approach the exam or how to uh, break down your approach and how to uh, structure your preparation, you can reach out to us and we'll be able to guide you better. So thank you and goodbye.